Hey, everybody. Just wanted to do a quick recording um, of some of the main topics we're going to be talking about tomorrow on the block party. And uh, we're going to do a number of recordings on that. Um, one of the most they're all important, but one of the most important will be at one o'clock. We're going to have a, a really deep conversation about uh, humanity, nature, the cosmos, spirituality, the infinite, etc. That'll be at one o'clock, dear Umer, under the banner, dear Umer. And uh, Melissa is going to lead that conversation. And at times, I'm sure we'll co-lead with others. Why don't you co-lead with us? Um, but anyway, she will definitely be setting the context and the framing for that. Um, from 7 to 9 a.m. food healers, 9 to 11 SRM, 11 to 1 uh, Trove, the press conference, our various webs various websites and social media and other forms of media, uh, including collective intelligence, which we'll be talking about. It's not just a medium, but it's a you know, it's a whole thing unto itself. Um, and that'll probably take us till, oh yeah, and that takes us to one o'clock. And then one o'clock, dear Rumer, with the foci that I mentioned at the very beginning of the recording. And that'll probably easily take us to three o'clock, if not four. <laughs> and, um, you know, at some point after that, we'll take a break. And then Food Healers again at 7 p.m., um, followed by other cool stuff. So um, I wanted to uh, screen share and now shifting gears from the schedule to kind of this overarching topic space. Um, there's kind of two overarching topic spaces. One is uh, COP26, which we're still uh, digesting. Um, James, Alan, Jamie and I were all there in Glasgow, as many of you know. Uh, performing, doing all kinds of cool stuff. Um, hey, Marco, we're recording. Let me pause recording. All right, after a brief pause and welcome back, Marco. Um, we're, as I was saying, there's two kind of overarching things that I think we'll, we're gonna cover in each of the topic areas that we'll cover tomorrow on the block party. One of those is COP26 and our ongoing digestion of what happened there, both our own experiences performing and being interviewed and giving speeches and meeting people and all that. And um, the other is uh, a framework that I'm going to propose that I think would be helpful for thinking about all this and mapping it all out. Anyway, let me just get right down to it and uh, give an introduction to this framework. Questions, comments, welcome as we go. Here goes, so screen sharing. Okay. So, on the left here, on the left of these parallel lines with the green in the middle. On the left-hand side, there is, I'm just gonna put kind of the current paradigm, right? And on the right-hand side, I'm just gonna make a small modification um, I'm going to add goals and solutions, which map to those goals. Anyway, on the, on the right-hand side of the green barrier divider is new, the new paradigm. And the old paradigm I'm suggesting is characterized by defeatism. I call it, I put defeatism plus plus, parasitism and deception. Um, and the defeatism is, you know, no, we can't have utopia, you know, come on, 
you know, we can't, you know, everyone's talking about, you know, we can all live in harmony with each other and with nature. And, you know, no, you know, there, there is no ideal system. The Soviets tried it, the Chinese tried it, the Khmer Rouge tried it, you know, so many people tried it, it didn't work. So, you know, get real, right? And then that defeatism, I put plus plus because it's even darker than that, <laughs> or there are shades of darkness of it, but that leads to parasitism. Hey man, the only way you're gonna make it in the, if, if we can't cooperate to have a utopia for humanity, nature, spirit, the cosmos, etc., then the best we can do is dog eat dog. So just make sure that you are able to suck more resources and accumulate and hoard more resources for yourself than anyone else, or as much as you can first to survive and then to thrive and have kids and, you know, be able to afford all kinds of stuff, et cetera. Right. Uh, so parasitism and then, but because all that sounds kind of ugly, you know, parasitism is just kind of like, it really sounds ugly. We therefore engage in a form of deception, right? Deceiving ourselves and others, and then ultimately participating in a, in a collective deception, right? You know, think like, I don't know, the Republican National Convention, something like that. I mean, just the kind of, you know, I mean, or Fox News, you know, putting a nice skin on it, shall we say, a nice um, dressing on top of the reality, which is defeatism and parasitism. But anyway, that's kind of the current paradigm. That's kind of like, you know, how to make it in the current world without changing the paradigm. Now, to change the paradigm, what are we changing it to? Well, the, the foundation of the new paradigm is the collective and that collective is you know not just humanity and not just the rest of nature all of mother earth right but it also makes it also includes you know uh, spirit cosmos you know the basically the whole of the whole right everything why, why leave anything out, right? It is one universe after all. It's one, one creation. Um, <clears throat> I, unless you believe in multiple different creations and universes and all that. <laughs> um, but anyway, those are, those are other, other, but bottom line, the collective. And we envision a specific evolution from collective intelligence, which includes unpacking and disassembling all this, all the stuff of the current paradigm that doesn't just disappear in one conversation, but evolving collective intelligence to collective super intelligence, where we can both identify our goals, our collective goals, and identify those solutions that we want to co-create and implement to meet those, to achieve those goals. So what might those goals look like, right? Well, we have, um, you know, stopping the killing, ending the six mass extinction. We have the goal of cooling the planet, which is absolutely vital to achieving stopping the killing. It's either, you know, death by flames or death by machete, but death is death, right? Um, here, we're talking about stopping the killing, the death by machete, including slashing and burning rainforests to make way for animal agriculture, all that kind of killing and destruction. Um, so these are two, two goals just for, just for stopping the decimation, the destruction of life on earth. And then the third, as I see it anyway, is healing, you know, and that starts with food healers, which of course is the best way I believe for actually achieving, you know, stopping the killing, uh, and cooling the planet as 80% of 87% of climate change is caused by animal agriculture, um, according to Dr. Silas Rao's research and analysis. And then of course, it's not just, you know, not just, you know, healing people with food healers, but whole ecosystem restoration, et cetera, the healing of all species. And those are just the immediate obvious goals. There are other goals. Um, that, you know, again, we need to identify with our collective intelligence. And then that, that, that 
the, the clear identification of those goals, then um, brings us to the realm of solutions. You know, what, what are the most urgent solutions? Well, we have, um, you know, food healers as just one, ob I mean, we're already doing food healers in a number of places and similar projects, uh, but that maps directly to stopping the killing and the healing, right? Then we have marine cloud brightening, which goes straight to cooling the planet, right? And then of course you have collective intelligence itself, which ultimately leads to all of the above per the drawing in the upper right here. Collective intelligence leading to collective super intelligence. Um, leading to the, the collective identification of our collective goals solutions, etc. So anyway, and then of course, you know, likewise, we have whatever other solutions are thought up as we go along, right, on into the future. Um, any questions or comments about all of that as just like a general framework? Okay, and um, by the way, what I haven't talked about is, you know, how do we, how do we undo the old paradigm? How do we safely and systematically dismantle the old paradigm, right? Um, and that's, that's a deep, deep topic unto itself. Um, but I, I have, I've, I've been working on kind of a mental model for that. And one of the analogies I'm using to, to, that helps me think about that is the analogy of, um, imagine we had some international chess tournament, right? But instead of one player representing themselves or their country or whatever, it was a whole team of players right and they also brought with them a computer a team of players with a computer now you could have deep blue ibm's deep blue loaded up on that computer right and whatever the other team that you're playing against whenever they make a move you load it into the computer but you also have this team of experts expert chess players analysts you know etc cetera, etc cetera. statisticians computer modelers um mathematicians there on the team looking at different scenarios that deep blue spits out right and probabilistic scenarios and everything else so obviously it's the smartest team including deep blue or whatever software computer plus software is is on your side right it's the smartest overall collective the collective human intelligence plus the machine intelligence or the artificial intelligence, the smartest collection of those will be the winning team. You know, probably, you know, probabilistically, <laughs> right? Do, do you see what I'm saying or have I lost you guys? Any, any thoughts on that? Any reflections on that? Okay, let me just pause recording just so we can reflect a minute.